Aloha everyone and welcome back to Planet Raw. Uh, yeah, it would be hilarious to say it's been a while. Actually, it's been a long time uh, that I've been in this park and um, yeah, I've already announced that in Isla Pali and I have also announced that in, in my streams. So for those of you who are watching my videos most often, uh, they know that I'm kind of done with this project. However, this doesn't mean that I won't finish it. So here is the maybe second last episode. I don't know if maybe two more, but I guess I will do just one long video and then just cut this in episodes and we were gonna do then um, maybe a re real time part. Maybe I'll do a second video as a real time part, depending on how much more footage it will be. But um, I will kind of end this project a lot more uh, simplified and a lot more, uh, uh, let's say a, a lot less um, detailed than I have originally planned it. Uh, reason being is that um, for once, I think the project has shown uh, what I wanted to kind of prove and this is that the base game is a great game and that you can basically do the same with the game as you can do without DLCs uh, as you can do with DLCs I should say mm. yes for sure many of the DLC pieces uh, they, they do make your life a lot easier they help you uh, creating stuff a lot better and easier than you can do with the base game uh, there are a lot of pieces that are super useful uh, that are yeah more or less impossible to create without the pieces honestly um, but there are always ways to work around that so yeah I'm, I'm really I'm really happy to say that even uh, three years after launch uh, this game as the base version uh, still holds up to the standards and I, I think if you don't have the game yet and if you don't own it uh, don't be scared uh, to only start with the base game uh, option and and then maybe slowly get some DLCs if you want them um, because the game is really worth the price uh, obviously also the price you pay for it now um, with the limited I should say limited but it's not really limited but with the amount of stuff you have in the game uh, from the get-go and uh, Planet Raw really proved that this is uh, super nice and super uh, great working I feel like I also will give you some info in the last episode on uh, yeah some of the most important things people don't really talk about but I think we have to count how many kind of uh, rides and coasters and stuff are uh, in are contained in the base game. I, I think it's really important to point out that the base game is really uh, really really great by now because a lot of things have been added after launch um, like nearly with every uh, paid DLC there was always a free update as well and the free update um, quite often even contained right we got the free F25 um, Frontier uh, birthday if you will uh, ride as a super nice addition um, there were also added some uh, rides while other DLCs were pushed along so there's always been good amount of stuff for the players uh, that don't own the DLCs uh, so yeah for me this was really important to do um, because I do understand also um, that it, it's a bit hard for those people uh, watching my videos um, to, to understand that I am also just a player and a gamer as you are I mean only that I do own all the DLCs doesn't mean that I nece necessarily don't understand that there are um, way more people out there who don't own uh, each and every DLC and that these guys out there also need kind of a comparison right they, they do need also uh, an honest opinion on that and uh, this is what I tried to deliver with this project I really wanted to show that you are nothing short of any fun and any um, yeah joy that the game delivers if you don't own a DLC or if you just own a few of them uh, and I wanted to show that and force myself to experience this and I have to say it was a good experience it, it was really um, putting me back into into a, a frame that I wanted to be in for a certain amount of time um, to experience how that feels and uh, to still be able to talk to you guys uh, on, a, on a foundation of knowing what the base game actually delivers. Uh, I do also have to say, and this is now, it's kind of the, the, the other side of the metal, uh, me me metal, metal, I wanted to say metal, but of the metal, I should say. Um, we also have to talk about that one. Uh, the game itself, uh, with all the DLCs, is however a lot better 
so, you know, I was trying to say that the base game is not bad, but that doesn't mean that the other thing can't be better. And I have to say, it is a lot better. But mainly because of the pieces and of the rides that are contained in most of the DLCs. I think if I should rate all the DLCs after um, what they are like and what they contain, it's pretty hard. But I think that... Um, there, the Vintage DLC for me was one of the most useful ones, um, shortly followed by the Spooky DLC, which also had a lot of great things. Um, then I have to say, it really was a hard, to, it was a struggle for me to to somehow uh, rate between the uh, Ghostbusters DLC, actually, and the uh, Studios DLC, I believe it was. Um, oh no, actually the Adventure one was also. You see, it's really hard to rate them, but I really believe that the um, the 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 how's it called again? The Ghostbusters. Sorry, I was just a little bit confused here. The Ghostbusters DLC definitely um, was really unexpected, but also super useful. So I think that DLC definitely delivered. And then I would rate the Adventure one and the uh, uh, Studio one very close to each other. Like they're completely different. They delivered completely. Um, a different content in terms of what you can do with it while the studios dlc is really focused on making realistic stuff and really making studios like parks and um, actually getting a bit more into lighting and a bit more scenes and a bit more show aspects the adventure one was really hinted and, and pointed at uh, animatronics and uh, wildlife and plants and stuff like that um, and i think the last one is definitely world's fair pack because i feel this pack was really a casual pack, which I also said that back then, and that still holds true. I don't feel it's as bad as many people say it is. Um, it definitely didn't deliver as many great uh, items as all the other packs. It, it definitely also didn't uh, deliver um, yeah, useful stuff in, in form of, uh, I don't know, things you can utilize in the game in many different ways. It basically just gave us a huge variety of shops and brands and I have to say that for me personally this was a super welcome and super useful addition but this is just me personally because I felt that I do definitely have enough rides I also felt that I do have um, well nice pieces to do basically everything I, I wanted to do and I also had um, a lot of coasters that I still haven't built back then. So I was really thankful because the one thing I really got a bit bored of was the lack of different um, brands in the game. I was still missing uh, some some major things uh, that have been kind of brought into the game again with this uh, DLC. And so this is really a DLC I, um, I liked. Um, however, it still would be the last position in my ratings of DLCs, but um, since I do think all of the DLCs were really good, um, I have to admit that uh, it's, it's not too bad to be on last position uh, as long as it's still a very good rated last position, if that makes any sense. It doesn't, but it, ma it does make sense. <laughs> Just trust me, it does make sense. Um, yeah, so I think enough talk about general things. Let's just quickly talk about what I've done here in the episode. So. Whilst I've been uh, going with the general Planko style-ish um, yeah, theme for uh, the F25 coaster, which is essentially the BNM sit-down coaster, I went in here for the Vicoma Mine Train coaster. Um, is it actually called Mine Train coaster? Is it just a Vicoma Steel Kids coaster? I don't even know how exactly this one is called, um, but uh, this one is aimed at using uh, the yeah well Western theme pieces of uh, the base game. I guess it's it's what you should call them. Um, I mean, this is the thing. I am using those pieces as very expected ones. So I I didn't want to I didn't want to create something which is really unexpected here. I really wanted to force myself to use the pieces as they are somehow supposed to be used. This is also part of the series. So um, that's what I did here. I obviously try to to bring some more creativity in and uh, just to make it look nice and look good and just fill in the gaps as always. Um, but it's not just being mad uh, as I always am to to just kind of force myself to find some solutions. With other pieces so I use fences as fences I use walls as walls and I use windows as windows instead of using them all for different purposes and 
I think the the most in a way creative way of using pieces was just using uh, some deco elements on the roofing and that's about it. Uh, the rest of it is basically as it is supposed to be. So yeah, for me this is some unusual stuff but uh, because I do know that most of the people play like that, it is uh, very important to do it as well and uh, just get a feel of it. And it doesn't feel bad. It doesn't hurt my feelings. It's it's okay. It's okay. I can live with that. I don't get the same relief. Don't get me wrong. But it's it's okay. I just I don't feel too bad. It's all fine. I'm just kidding here. Um, it, it's not that I do all, always use pieces for different purposes. It's I think. Yeah, maybe let's just talk about that real quick, because I feel like this episode is now uh, screwed anyways in terms of topics, so whatever. Um, yeah, I feel I feel that Planet Coaster in itself um, evolved quite a bit, to be honest. Like, this, the story of Planet Coaster, how things uh, are tackled and used, um, is, is quite interesting. Because at the very beginning, um, the, the game didn't really offer too many detailed pieces in terms of realism and in terms of, uh, uh, that was a weird pronunciation by the way, of realism and also not for backstage and all these kind of, in, in inverted commas, boring pieces, right? The game had awesome scenery items but just for the very common scenery things you would use them for um, but you were actually lacking a lot of these um, very boring pieces like metal grinders, metal fences, uh, bins, trash bins, doors, backstage elements like lights, different boring street lamp lanterns and all these kind of stuff. Um, so we needed to create that on our own and this led us to um, basically break the game in terms of how we use pieces, how we tackle them, how we abuse them to create different stuff. But over the time, which is a to totally natural and normal process, over the time um, Frontier added more and more pieces that were basically trying to hold us back from using all these mo millions of pieces to create simple elements and make them look nice. Um, so the game evolved. Um, we naturally started to use pieces more actually what they are meant for uh, rather than just breaking it. The breaking still happens for very specific purposes that will never end because as long as not every single piece is also created with the TMT and better implemented and the you know um, everything is fine and everyone has access to it it never will change because uh, it's way easier still for people to build that in game and then to model it 3d themselves or ask other people to do it or just wait for it so yeah it still is a valid thing to build that in game um, however things got a lot more nice looking by default because there is so much more variety in pieces and options to make it even look nice from the get-go and from using pieces as they're supposed to use and um, this is how the game evolved so if you look at for example our Garuda project that Sylvan and I did or even even Quali Beach um, it still looks nice and great but you can definitely tell how much of a difference it was to play back then and how much better it could look by now completely without any TMT pieces just with the base game pieces and I hit my microphone it wouldn't have been a Rudy episode without anyways um, but yeah so we are basically going through the end of this episode um, which means uh, I'm slowly wrapping it up here you can see I basically built the entire station of uh, this wooden uh, mine train coaster actually it's a steel mine train coaster but anyways um, this kit my kids mine train coaster just um, putting some plants here and there to make it look nice and yeah for the following episode of this project which will be released whenever I don't know uh, I really don't know I have no clue at all uh, someday it will be released <laughs> hopefully not uh, too long here but anyways um, yeah, I will basically do all the rest. Just simple theming, uh, a few, a few little uh, pavilions here and there, a few little things, and that's about it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Leave me your feedback if you like the series so far, if you have seen it, anyways, because um, you might just notice it yet. So please let me know, and uh, I see you in the next one. Until then, have a great time. Bye, guys.